ऐसी भक्ति विरांत स्वामी शील प्रभु पार की जाए इसकान बीबीटी फाउंडर चार्ज दिवंगत शील प्रभु पार की जाए जाए हम विष्णु पार परम हम सब प्रभु जग चारी असतरत श्री श्रीमान इस दिवंगत शील भक्त सिरांत को स्वामी महाराज की जाए अनंत को रिवाशन बिंद की जाए नाम चार हो श्री कृष्ण चैतान्य प्रभु नीचानंद श्री अद्वैत गिदार हर शिव श्री गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गौ गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंडार कुंड गिरी गोवृदान की जाए श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाए श्री मायापुर नवदीप धाम की जाए जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाए न्यू द्वारक धाम की जाए जमुना माई की जाए गंगा माई की जाए श्रीमाती तोसी देवी की जाए श्रीमाती भक्ति देवी की जाए भगवतेवासुदेवाय <laughs> ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वीडियो श्रीमा भागवतम कैंटो 2 चैप्टर 2 टेक्स्ट नंबर 35 द लॉर्ड इन द हार्ट भगवान सर्वभूतेषु लक्षिता हरि दृश्यायर बुधि आदिबीर दृष्टा लक्षणायर अनुमापकाय भगवान सर्वभूतेषु लक्षिता स्वत्मा हरि दृश्यार बुद्यादि बीर दृष्टा लक्षणार अनुमापकाय भगवान सर्वभूतेषु लक्षिता स्वमना हरि दृश्यार बुद्यादि बीर दृष्टा लक्षणार अनुमापकाय भगवान सर्वभूतेषु लक्षिता स्वमना स्वत्मना हरि दृश्यार बुद्यादि बीर दृष्टा लक्षणार अनुमापकाय लक्षणार अनुमापकाय भगवान सर्वभूतेषु लक्षणार हरि ऋषार बुद्यादि बीर दृष्टा अनुमापक भगवान साहब भूतेशीता भगवान साहब भूतेश लक्षिता स्वत्मना हरि दृश्यार बुद्यादि बीर दृष्टा अक्षनार अनुमापक भूतेषु लक्षिता स्वत्मना हरि 
दृष्टा बुद्धि बिल दृष्टा लक्षण अनुमापकाय माताजी भगवान सर्वभूतेशु लक्षिता सम्मनाहरि दृष्टा बुद्धि बिल दृष्टा लक्षण अनुमापकाय भगवान सर्वभूतेशु लक्षिता स्वत्मनाहरि दृष्टियार बुद्धि बिर दृष्टा लक्षणार अनुमापकाय वर्ड फॉर वर्ड मीनिंग भगवान द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड Sarva, all, Bhuteshu, in the living entities. Lakshitaha is visible. So Atmana, along with the self. Hari, the Lord. Drishyai, by what is seen. Budi Adivihi. by intelligence drasta one who sees lakshanai by different signs anumapakai <coughs> by hypothesis uh, translation purported by divine grace shri prabhupad the personality of godhead lord shri krishna is in every living being along with the individual soul and this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence please repeat the personality of god had lord shri krishna is in every living being along with the individual soul and this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence a very lengthy purport today the general argument of the common man is that since the lord is not visible to our eyes how can one either surrender unto him or render transcendental loving service unto him to such a common man here is a practical suggestion given by sila sukadeva goswami as to how one can perceive the supreme lord by reason and perception actually the lord is not perceivable by our present materialized senses but when one is convinced of the presence of the lord by a practical service attitude there is a revelation by the lord's mercy and such a pure devotee of the lord can perceive the lord's presence always and everywhere he can perceive that intelligence is the form direction of the paramatma planetary portion of the personality of godhead the presence of paramatma in everyone's company is not very difficult to realize even for the common man the procedure is as follows one can perceive one's self identification and feel positively that he exists he may not feel it very abruptly but by using a little intelligence he can feel that he is not the body he can feel that the hand the leg the head the hair and the limbs are all his bodily parts and parcels but as such the hand the leg the head etc cannot be identified with the self therefore just by using intelligence he can distinguish and separate his self from other things that he sees So the natural conclusion is that the living being either man or beast is the seer and he sees besides himself all other things. So there is a difference between the seer and the seen. Now by a little use of intelligence we can also readily agree that the living being who sees the things beyond himself by ordinary vision has no power to see or to move independently. all our ordinary actions and perceptions depend on various forms of energy 
supplied to us by nature in various combinations. Our senses of perception and of action, that is to say, our five perceptive senses of hearing, touch, sight, taste, and smell, as well as our five senses of action, namely the hands, legs, speech, evacuation organs, and reproductive organs, and also our three subtle senses, namely mind, intelligence, and ego, 13 senses in all, are supplied to us by various arrangements of gross or subtle forms of natural energy. And it is equally evident that our objects of perception are nothing but the products of the inexhaustible permutations and combinations of the forms taken by natural energy. As this conclusively proves that the ordinary living being has no independent power of perception or of motion, and as we undoubtedly feel our existence being conditioned by nature's energy, we conclude that he who sees his spirit and that the senses as well as the objects of perception are material. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence. So let me read that again. It's pretty powerful. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence. That is the difference between spirit and matter. There are some less intelligent arguments that matter develops the power of seeing and moving as a certain organic development. But such an argument cannot be accepted because there is no experimental evidence that matter has anywhere produced a living entity. Trust no future, however pleasant. Idle talks regarding future development of matter into spirit are actually foolish because no matter has ever developed the power of seeing or moving in any part of the world. Therefore, it is definite that matter and spirit are two different identities. And this conclusion is arrived at by the use of intelligence. Now we come to the point that the things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animate unless we accept someone as a user of or director of the intelligence. Intelligence gives one direction, like some higher authority. And the living being cannot see or move or eat or do anything without the use of intelligence. When one fails to take advantage of intelligence, he becomes a deranged man. And so a living being is dependent on intelligence or the direction of a superior being. Such intelligence is all-pervading. Every living being has his intelligence, and this intelligence, being the direction of some higher authority, is just like a father giving directions or direction to his son. The higher authority who is present and residing within every individual living being is the super self. At this point in our investigation, we may consider the following question. On the one hand, we realize that all our perceptions and activities are conditioned by arrangements of material nature, yet we also ordinarily feel and say, quote, I am perceiving or I am doing. Therefore, we can say that our material senses of perception and action are moving because we are identifying the self with the material body and that the superior principle of super-self is guiding and supplying us according to our desire. By taking advantage of the guidance of super-self in the form of intelligence, we can either continue to study and to put into practice our conclusion that I am not this body. Or we can choose to remain in the false material identification, fancying ourselves to be the possessors and doers. Our freedom consists in orienting <clears throat> our desire either toward the ignorant material misconception or the true spiritual conception. We can easily attain to the true spiritual conception by recognizing the super-self, Paramatma, to be our friend and guide 
and by dovetailing our intelligence with the superior intelligence of Paramatma. The super self and the individual self are both spirit, and therefore the super self and the individual self are both qualitatively one and distinct from one from matter, excuse me. But the super self and the individual self cannot be on the equal level. The super self gives direction or supplies intelligence, and the individual self follows the direction. And thus actions are performed properly. The individual is completely dependent on the direction of the super self because in every step the individual soul follows the direction of the super self in the matter of seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling, willing, and so forth. So far as common sense is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there are three identities, namely matter, spirit, and super spirit. Now, if we go to the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedic intelligence, <clears throat> We can further understand that all three identities, namely matter, individual spirit, and the super spirit are all dependent on the supreme personality of Godhead. The super self is a partial representation or plenary portion of the supreme personality of Godhead. The Bhagavad Gita affirms that the supreme personality of Godhead dominates all over the material world by his partial representation only. God is great, and he cannot be simply an order supplier of the individual selves. Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the supreme self, <clears throat> Purushottama, the absolute personality of Godhead. Realization of the super self by the individual self is the beginning of self-realization. And by the progress of such self-realization, one is able to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by intelligence, by the help of authorized scriptures, and principally by the grace of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary conception of, <clears throat> preliminary conception of the Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. <clears throat> and the Srimad Bhagavatam is the further explanation of the science of Godhead. So if we stick to our determination and pray for the mercy of the director of intelligence sitting within the same bodily tree, like a bird sitting with another bird, as explained in the Upanishads. Certainly the purport of the revealed information in the Vedas becomes clear to our vision, and there is no difficulty in realizing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. The intelligent man, therefore, after many births of such use of intelligence, surrenders himself at the lotus feet of Vasudev, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Whew. Om Jnana Timiranda Shagyanan Jana Shalakya Chakshu Ummiritam Jena Tazmai Sri Guru Vena Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nishananda Sri Advaita Gidhar Harsiva Sri Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare well, <clears throat> as I was reading this huge, long purport, I was thinking, man, what am I going to add to this? It's practically impossible to add anything to that. Prabhupada explained everything. So, I'll just venture into some little thing that I can maybe possibly say. But <clears throat> I, uh, in, the, in the first uh, paragraph, long paragraph, and Prabhupada says, actually the Lord is not perceived by our present materialized senses. But when one is convinced of the presence of the Lord by a practical service attitude, there is a revelation by the Lord's mercy. So, this is a very important point. Sarvapati vinir muktat tat parat vena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhaktir uchate. It's described that when one renders service to the Lord, which is what Papa is speaking about here, there's two side effects that comes from that devotional service. One is that we lose this designation, uh, thinking that we're this material body. And simply by being employed in the service of the Lord, one becomes uh, purified. So, in order for us to understand 
this amazing work, the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can see that uh, we need to follow this process of rendering service uh, to Krishna. And we need to shed ourselves of these designations. I think it can't be more apparent than today what's going on in society in America and how these designations are creating an unbelievable circumstance here if not only here but in the world and this has been going on since time immemorial so we can see how the Srimad Bhagavatam although written thousands of years ago even today in these so-called modern times it's relevant so this is the problem problem is this bodily designation and this bodily designation is very very thick as we can see uh, uh, just I'm sure most of you saw the ghastly scene of this policeman uh, murdering this particular soul or the body of a particular soul and it was very ghastly but we can see that all because of this bodily designation one thinking I'm black one thinking I'm white and whatever uh, all these things occur to the point of, of killing just murdering without any hesitation this bodily attraction is so strong that uh, it creates so much discord and unhappiness and destruction. So we can see the importance of, of hearing uh, the messages of Vasudev, of Krishna. Uh, there's that verse that's described, Shu 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 Shadadanasya Vasudeva Kataruchi San Mahatsevaya Vipapunya Titir Nasevanat. It's described that by serving those devotees who are freed from all vice. Uh, and that's very important. Because today, everybody's thinking they're somebody. And everybody wants to be served. But here it's described very lucidly that, that one, when one is uh, uh, free from all vice, that's the um, uh, important aspect of who we serve. You have to serve somebody but who should you serve? So the Bhagavatam describes that we should serve those individuals, those souls who are free from all vice. And by such service, one gains the affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva, of Krishna. Now, the reason we want to do that is because by hearing the messages of Vasudeva, one can actually become a pure devotee of the Lord, a Mahatma. And uh, that's what's saying here in this particular purport by Srila Prabhupada. A pure devotee of the Lord can perceive the Lord's presence always and everywhere. So that's the kind of person that we want to actually be associated with. Because if we associate with that individual, then we also will be understanding this purpose of seeing Krishna everywhere, always being with Krishna. And this is kind of laid out here by Srila Prabhupada in this purport. So, Mahatseva, rendering service uh, to a pure devotee of the Lord. Uh, essential, extremely important. And the whole Krishna consciousness movement, everything that we do in this society, in this movement today, is given to us by Srila Prabhupada. A Mahatseva, a pure devotee of the Lord. So, if we just continue just following those instructions not deviating following sincerely with faith this is also important because it has to be done with faith shraddha if we do it with faith uh, then the purification process takes place and then we ourselves can become a mahatma 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 nastu mamparta daivin prakriti masritaha so this, this is very important because these Mahatmas, they're not deluded by the bodily platform of life or uh, thinking that they're a product of this material energy because they're under the guidance and the protection of the uh, Paraprakriti, the transcendental nature. And this transcendental nature is actually uh, run by Radharani. She's in control of that para prakriti the apara prakriti is actually managed by maya maha maya 
This is a fodder. So if one is actually uh, under the guidance of, of a, a pure soul, a Mahatma, then we come under the umbrella of Radharani. That, that's our protection. But this has to be done very faithfully and honestly in order to get that protection because Maha, Mahamaya is extremely powerful beyond our perception. We have no idea. And, and you can see the results of Mahamaya just by seeing what's going on in, in the, uh, the America today. This is Mahamaya. It's all about the bodily platform of life due to ignorance, lack of knowledge. And this is the biggest problem. People have no knowledge. They're innocent, but there's no one giving them information. There's no knowledge that's being uh, put out there so that they can fight this Mahamaya. They have no idea who to lead, who to follow. Right? Isn't that a big problem? Who are we going to follow? Who's our leader? Who's telling us what to do, where to go? Yeah, this, it's, a, it's a lack of that leadership. And that's ignorance because no one knows the truth. So you can un, we can appreciate more and more this uh, pure devotee of the Lord who's freed from all vice, all desires of material enjoyment. Uh, no such thing. They're completely under the protection of Radharani, under the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is their desire. This is what they want to do. So, this Adao Shraddha, uh, extremely important. Those who are engaged in hearing with faith, uh, they can actually get a, we, we can, this will give us the sword. You know, we, we, you know, you have a sword, a cutting sword, very, you know, powerful cutting sword. It's described, yet anu dasyasina yukta karma granta nirbandana. That if we follow the instruction of these great souls, in the science of Krishna consciousness, we get the sword to cut this, you know, anarta, these anartas in the material world. This karma granti bandana. Karma. We have karma built up birth after birth after birth. And how do we get rid of that karma? We need the sword. And that sword is Krishna consciousness. And that Krishna consciousness is given to us by a pure devotee of the Lord, who's free from all vice. And it says if we serve such a great soul, we actually become benefited from that. And what is the benefit? We want to hear about Krishna. So the more that we're engaged with this uh, shraddha, this faith, the more that we're uh, absorbed in that, then we see that we can cut the hard knot of material existence. This is what it takes. And it is a hard knot. Mahamaya is very powerful. Uh, one can be very, very sincere, but there's so many uh, stories in the Bhagavatam about great devotees of the Lord and somehow or other by some kind of a, a slip and boom, finished. But the greatness is that they come back and they end up being pure devotees of the Lord again. So, yes, in Krishna consciousness, uh, we may have our slips. We may have a problem here or there. But it's described that as long as we follow uh, the instruction of the uh, pure devotee of the Lord, even if there is some discrepancy, even sometimes there's a discrepancy, but even if that happens, still you get the result of that particular service to the pure devotee. What's that? Yasya prasadam, bhagavat prasadam, yasya prasadam, nagatika topi. If you please the purity of the pure devotee of the Lord, immediately you get, um, immediately you get this uh, wonderful reaction. Uh, you're under that protection of that pure devotee who's under the protection of daiva prakriti, the transcendental nature or uh, Radharani. Very important. When I, when I was like thinking about this, I thought, wow. It, that's, because what is, what is our qualification? We have none. 
Really, we have none. Even whatever we try to do, uh, <laughs> it has some kind of tinge to it. But that's okay. You know, just like if uh, we're in competition. And in competition, you know, we're, we get caught up into this idea of who we are and let me do big and, you know, let me, do the, let me be the best. But even though that discrepancy is there, because that devotee stays in devotional service, and performs his service with faith, there's benefit. There's great benefit. So it doesn't really matter. And I remember when uh, being a new devotee, going on book distribution, that Srila Prabhupada, he encouraged this competition. <laughs> there, there was a, a what is that, Shuri Dave, he started a, a, a newsletter, a weekly newsletter for book distribution. And Prabhupada would <laughs> read that. And you'd hear so many stories about how Prabhupada loved it. And one time there was a story where Los Angeles Temple was uh, competing with uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami and the Radha Damodar team. And somehow or other LA beat them. And Srila Prabhupada made even a comment that, uh, oh boy, Tamal Krishna Maharaj is going to have a heart attack. He'll have a heart attack when he hears the score. So, Prabhupada encouraged this. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't something just, you know, and, and, and he knew what our nature was. He knew that we weren't pure devotees, that we had a lot of desires. But he realized that dovetailing those desires, that, in, that enthusiasm towards the service of the Lord, he was our protection. Srila Prabhupada was protecting us. And those devotees that remained sincere and dedicated with faith, they continued on. And we were happy, satisfied, so much so. So, you get this adashradha, adashradha. How important is that? Because from that faith, then you really search for sadhu sangha. If you have that faith in the science of Krishna consciousness, you go, oh, this is very nice. Then you, you want to associate sadhu sangha. You want to associate with the devotee. Maschita matkata prana bodhayantam parasparam katyasta samam nicham tushanti cha ramanti cha. We want to associate with those pure devotees of the Lord. But there's, there's a certain thing that those pure devotees do. They don't, they don't necessarily talk about the weather. But they uh, are encouraging uh, and enlightening each other about Krishna. That's their satisfaction. Because those devotees, those saints, those sadhus, they're fully surrendered to Krishna, fully surrendered to Him. And their pleasure comes from hearing about Krishna. That's the pleasure. They don't get pleasure from other outside activity. They get pleasure from hearing about Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is about your faith, your shraddha, and then building on it by sadhu sangha. What should that sadhu sangha be? By conversing and enlightening each other about Krishna. That, that has to be the relationship with each other. That is what's going to make you happy. That will make you happy. If somebody comes up to you and starts speaking to you and you start enlightening them or conversing with them about Krishna, it's beyond the material world. We get above Trump. We get above so many other things that are out there in this world today. And that's the key element. And by that activity, we're becoming purified. So this, you know, Sadhu Sangha, that's what Sadhu Sangha is about. From Sadhu Sangha, Bhajata Kriya, uh, uh, what's that? Bhagavad Kriya. Bhajana Kriya, that's it, sorry, Bhajana Kriya. Devotional service. Devotional service comes. Because devotional service is what we're talking about here. This is what this is. When by practical service attitude, there's a revelation of the Lord's mercy. When you start serving Krishna with faith and with devotees, like-minded devotees, then what happens is that you become so happy. You become so satisfied. It's like it reminds me of the Gundicha temple cleansing of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When all the devotees came together to clean the temple, Lord Jagannath. And they were, you know, everybody was chanting Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. 
and they were pouring water, just buckets and buckets of water, and everybody was in ecstasy serving Krishna and just hearing and speaking about Krishna. There was ecstasy in that. So we should be together like this, uh, together and on, on the altar as Pajaris. We should be chanting, Krishna, Krishna, let me serve Krishna. If we're in the kitchen, we should be chanting Krishna, Krishna, not so many other things that we chant and talk about. Because that creates a problem. That creates a difficulty. So this is Bhajana Kriya. Uh, so, so important. Because by that Bhajana Kriya is Anartha Nivriti. Anartha Nivriti, you get rid of all those things in the heart. And there's a lot of it. You just check your heart, you look in the mirror, and you'll see a lot of it, if we're honest. So many attachments we have. And then we, we come back down to this same platform of thinking that we're this body. You know, that I'm an Indian, uh, that I'm an American, I'm white, I'm black. Yes, this body, this body, this is what happens. And we can't get above that. Can't get above it unless we take shelter of, of this uh, association with faith and with real sadhu sangha desire, conversing with each other. And, uh, you, you know, in, in the end, it comes down to ruchi. Vasudeva kata ruchi. Taste. Taste has to be there. You cannot do this unless we have taste. Uh, taste means that you like something. Um, if I was to say to you, eat meat, Neva Vrata, I want you to eat meat today. This is going to be lunch. Big old huge hamburger for you. There you go. No, he doesn't like it. Ruchi doesn't mean forcing. Ruchi means that you like. You want it. That's what ruchi means. So, we have to develop ruchi. And you can only get it by faith, by association, by service, getting rid of anartas in the heart, then you have taste, ruchi. And that ruchi then is natural because if I, you know, if you, I can't force ruchi, you know, that won't be ruchi to you if I force you to do that. You'll say, Savas, what's the matter with you? I'm telling the GBC, man. I'm calling up on you. So you can't force that. It has to come natural. You have to like it. If you like it, you'll exhibit it. You'll want to talk about Krishna. You want to chant your japa. You want to chant Hare Krishna. Nobody's got to force you. If you like it, you'll get up. You'll do whatever it has to do to get up. You'll do whatever you have to do. It's just very simple. Because if you love somebody, uh, you know, all of us in this room, we can admit, we love somebody. <laughs> Sometime, rather, in the course of our life, we have loved somebody. And if you did love someone or do love someone, if you hear that uh, name of that person, immediately your heart becomes affected by it. Your heart becomes affected because that's a loved one. And that, and that it, it's so powerful that it can even break you down to cry when you think about that person out of love. You'll cry, you'll shed a tear. That's the power. So, if we have this taste for chanting Hare Krishna, then maybe we'll think a little bit like Rupa Goswami, who wanted millions of mouths, millions of ears, in order to chant and hear the holy name of Krishna. But if we don't follow the process, if we don't follow the process over lazy, or we don't have no desire, then one cannot get that ruchi, that taste. And that taste is so in, important in Krishna consciousness. It's essential. Otherwise, how can you go on? We have to have a taste. It cannot be forced. If we have to force you to taste Krishna consciousness, then you're not ready. Really, we're not ready. It's, it's very plain and simple. We're not ready. So we have to back up a little bit and we have to analyze our, our, you know, our faith. Which means, do we like what's going on here? <laughs> we don't like it? Okay, you like it. 
then you know, then sadhu sangha. Then you have to reanalyze, who, who am I associating with? What's my association? What am I doing? What are they making me think of? What's going on? Maybe I need to analyze that. And then service, bhajana kriya. Maybe I need to really take a look at my service. What am I doing? What, am I just sitting around watching TV all day? Or what am I doing? You know, analyze. What am I doing? Do I like my service? Do I like what I'm doing? You know, we have to, that's important. And then, you know, from that service, then you get rid of the, the, the seeds, this anartha that, that are in the heart. And they're, they're really heavy. Those seeds, sometimes I wake up in the morning and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling this, my mind is so disturbed on something that I can't get it out of my mind. You know, I'm trying to chant my job and all, and it won't leave me alone. And I think, what the? It's like almost like a curse. Uh, yes, that's how powerful this material energy is. Yeah, you, so we have to analyze how do we get rid of these things? And of course, having that wonderful taste of Krishna consciousness, that's the process. That's the sword. That's the sword to, you know, cut this hard knot. And this knot is very, very hard. Uh, very, very hard. So, karma granti sambhava. Yes, it's like a hard knot. Like if you have a shoe lace and it, it gets into a knot. It can be so crazy that you just want to take a knife and just cut it. You're not, you don't want to spend another minute with it. Because it's just so irritating. So you just get it and just cut it. Get rid of it. Yes, that's Krishna consciousness. It gets rid of that knot within the heart. So, taste is required. And uh, if we do that, then we'll see more and more uh, how uh, Krishna consciousness is a beautiful thing. It's uh, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yogi Pariyojita Janana Yasu Vairagyam Gyanam Chad Ahaitukam. You know, that, that it comes automatically in Bhakti Yoga. This uh, knowledge and renunciation. They're, they're automatic. When you when, when a person comes into Krishna consciousness, they don't have to think about renunciation. It's laid on them. I mean, you know, immediately, the four regulative principles, chant Hare Krishna, get up, only eat Krishna Pasadam. Immediately, they're put in a position of renunciation. You know, and then knowledge. Knowledge has to be there. Prabhupada said, if, you just, if you're just into renunciation, you won't make it. You have to have knowledge knowledge about Krishna what, that has to be there but if you become a devotee in the temple and you do service and you associate with devotees you come to Bhagavatam class how can you not develop knowledge it's there it's, it's, it, it, it's there with us every day and that's so important they have to come together knowledge and renunciation they can't, they can't be separated they have to be there and then from that, other things happen. Savai Pungshan Paro Dharma Yato Bhakti Arhokshu Jai Ahaituki Aprati Hata Yatma Supasiddhati. From that, you develop love for Krishna. Real genuine love. Real love. It's, it's real love. It's not, it's not just some vocabulary, but it's real love. You'll give your life. You'll see, I, this is my life. I'm not going to do anything else. This is what I'm going to do. That's what Krishna wants. And we get all that by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. Really, it's all. Uh, I heard one lecturer, Papa, said that uh, three things that we need to know. Bhaktaram, Jakavatsam, Sarvaloka, Maheshwaram, Suridam, Sarvabhutanam, Gyatvamam, Santimrichati. Three things that you have to know in Krishna consciousness. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead controller of everything. Krishna, he should be there for all the sacrifice. Anything that you may do in this life, you should do it for Krishna. To please Krishna. And that Krishna is your best friend. Papa said, if you know those three things, you will go back home back to God in. If you believe it. So our whole life is focused on that. Aren't we trying to please Krishna every day? By chanting his name, serving him, glorifying him. Yes, we're doing it automatically. We're doing this. 
all day long. This is our process. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm so over and you guys must be cursing me by now because you're not getting Prashad. So anyway, that's what I had to say today. So sorry for keeping everybody so long. Somebody should have said something. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. sexually agitated and, and in that course he may want to have fall down with his wife or he may want to just bloop to go have sex and then come back so the only thing that one can actually do is just take shelter of the instruction of the guru and by that instruction you take hold of it you believe it you, 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 you're determined and that gives you that strength and that determination 